Jeg sidder her om backstage med Flowrider. How are you? Happy to be here. You're happy to be here. Is Definitely. it your first time in Denmark? First time in Denmark. You know, a lot of times, like on a MySpace, I get a chance to speak to the fans and to be here. You know, it's definitely a pleasure. Mm. How do you like it here? I mean, so far, you know, I just got here this morning. You haven't seen anything. <laughs> I just seen, you know, like a lot of royalty here. You know. Mm. Yeah. Do you get to see anything, or do you just have to go straight back after your concert tonight? Oh, I definitely, you know, I got to get prepared, you know, and pack, you know, for in the morning because I'm leaving out in the morning. But I look forward to coming back. A lot of times, if I go to different places, I have more than like, you know, a couple of days, mm. and so so I get a chance to venture out and look at different things. But this time, I won't be able to, you know, take, you know, in some of the historic, some of the culture, culture. Do you know anything about Denmark? Not really. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you a pop quiz. <laughs> but it is a cute country, so the next time you go to Copenhagen, you have to see some stuff here. For sure. But you're looking forward to your performance tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Definitely, you know, come out here. You know, I came to give it 200%, you know, get the crowd involved, you know, make sure they put their hands in the eight year. That's important. You know, you never know, might bring some ladies on stage, get low, low. Oh. Hey, I'll be special. That'd be good. Yeah. Uh, is it fair to say that low changed your life? Um, Definitely, you know. Um, with the international success and it's definitely changed my life you know that's a record that I you know it's a blessing you know a lot of artists don't get that chance mm. but definitely that has opened up the doors and you know different avenues for me But you've been making music for many years, yeah. and uh, it took you some time to get that huge record deal. Were you ever thinking about not doing music? I mean, not at all. You know, no. uh, my first love was playing basketball, but at the same time, you know, this music, I grew up with my um, sister singing like gospel music, so I've always been inclined, you know, first, I mean, um, regardless of what type of music it was. But um, definitely, you know, always, you know, stay motivated, stay patient, persistent when it came to this hip hop. And, I think that's why, you know, I'm having the success I have now. Mm. But you did go to college for a while, didn't you? Yeah, just a little bit. I yeah. went to um, UNLV out in Las mm -hmm. Vegas for maybe like a month or so, but music always stayed in my mind. And then, like, years later, I went to um, Barry University out in Florida. And um, then I went off to L.A. right after that. Mm. But yeah, I went to school for a little bit. Okay. But it is a tough industry, and now you're in it. How do you like this business? I mean, you know, prior to me having been a signed artist, you know, I got a chance to look in, you know, the windows of it, you know, thanks to the Po' Boy family, you know, who always, you know, let me in and gave me, you know, um, the breakdown on the music, you know, and I read a couple of things also, so I felt the bumps and bruises prior to me having the deal. So, I mean, being in the record industry, this is something that I definitely, you know, always know a little bit about, but being in it is definitely something different. Mm. But. Um, with success, it kind of like hides all of that yeah. stuff that may be like unusual or the artist wouldn't like. Mm. But right now, everyone all over the world basically know your hit low. Uh, what does that feel like? I mean, you know, um, with every country that I get a chance to, you know, go to, that's like a whole nother life. So, I mean, it's, it's, that's always a plus. Um, now it's like I got the world listening to me and I'm definitely going to take advantage of it. Mm. But you'll hear it on TV, radio stations, you're here from a car, on the cell phone. Do you ever feel like, oh my God, that low song, I'm not going to hear it one more time? Not at all. Not you at know, all. Definitely financially stable because of these records and, um, hey, I wouldn't change it for the world. Mm. What about the fame? How do you like that? What's the best part and what's the worst part? I mean, the best part about it, you know, is the fact that you can put a smile on different ones' face, you know, mm. as far as the fans go. and. You know, as far as myself, you know, I love music and it, it's something that I love to do and it definitely, you know, um, takes care of me financially. Mm. But the worst part is probably like the extra family members that, you know, come out of nowhere with woodworks <laughs> and they want all types of money and they don't know how much money you even have. Mm. But I mean, that's, that's the downside of it, but at the same time, I wouldn't change it. No. Can you walk on your own on the street in the States? Oh, I, I can't. I can, but I can't without anyone running up to me trying to get autographs. Really? And Even like with that. the shades and the cap, people oh, recognize man. you. And most of the time, <laughs> that's what I have on, and they still recognize me. So. Mm. But it's still fun for you because it's so new, right? You will write the autographs and take the pictures with people. Right, right. But you know, it gets crazy. You know, like when um, people they want like 50 autographs and you got 100 people. Mm. You know, 
waiting in line. So, yeah. I mean, that could be, like, very, you know, tiresome. Mm. What did you do with your first, like, huge paycheck? Because I've heard that one of the first things you do is give something extremely nice to your mother. Definitely. Did you do that as well? Definitely. Like, my mom, you know, um, a lot of times, you know, you could go out and buy your mom a house and all of that. Mm. But, you know, she was already doing kind of, you know, well. But mm. at the same time, she just loves me to put the money in her hand. So I gave her a big lump sum. Okay. Yeah. What did you buy for yourself? Um, well, I didn't really have to go out and buy something that major besides my house mm. and everything. But um, thanks to the poor boy family, they gave me a truck and um, a ton of jewels. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Jewels is very important. When you're successful, wear all the bling bling and show it in the video, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. The signs of success. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But I heard you're from a family with a lot of girls, right? Yeah. Six, seven, seven sisters. sisters? Wow. What yeah. was that like? I mean, you know, normally, you know, you would have to be around women every day mm. if you grew up in that household like that. But um, I would get a chance to be around different guys and stuff because I grew up in a project, so right next door, you know, was my male friends. But the um, advantages were the fact that I didn't have to wash the dishes, take out the trash, mm. iron my clothes, and things like that. You know, so <laughs> I mean, I definitely loved it. Did any of your sisters encourage you to make music or inspire oh, you? I mean, at first, you know, they took it as like, yeah, right, you're really trying to be a rapper. <laughs> but as they seen, you know, um, my success grow, you know, slowly mm. but surely, you know, they, they got behind me and, you know, helped me out. Do you spoil them now? They get a little jewelry as well? Hey, I got like seven <laughs> sisters, so I mean, and a lot of nieces and nephews, so mm. when I can help them, I, I, I help them, but as far as spoiling them, I don't do that. No.